What we have here is the Macintosh SE logic board from the second or third computer our family had in the 90s. At some point, it was going to be recycled, and being into computers, my parents let me take it to pieces beforehand. This radius accelerator on top, with its golden 68020 CPU and 68881 FPU, made it irresistible to save. I collected it from my parents' house this summer, where it had been in storage for over 20 years. For all of that time, it still had its original pram battery, which luckily hadn't leaked. I was also worried about its capacitors, but it seems that unlike the SC30, the capacitors on the SE are pretty leak resistant. You'll notice, of course, that this logic board isn't inside of a Mac SE case anymore, and that's because the rest was recycled. I thought, though, that it'd be a pretty interesting project trying to bring it back to life, and this is the result. First, I needed power. The power connector on the SE is keyed the same as an ATX20 pin connector, and the voltages are all available on an ATX power supply as well. So, a new power source was a fairly straightforward rewiring job. After wiring up power, I was excited to hear a chime, confirming that, despite attic storage, the board still worked. The second step was video, which is where things become complicated, despite the comparatively simple video output of the SE. The 512 by 342 black and white signal is carried over three wires, vertical sync, horizontal sync, and then video intensity. Connected to the SE's original CRT, the vertical sync tells the electron beam to go to the screen top left corner, where it proceeds to scan across and either light up the phosphor or not. At the edge of the screen, the horizontal sync tells the beam to go back to the left side, where it proceeds to scan across again. This is basically the same way that VGA works, but at different refresh rates, making the direct signal incompatible with most monitors. Instead, I've recently been interested in the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller and particularly its programmable I.O. or P.I.O. functionality. The P.I.O. allows for precisely timed digital signaling. One demo of this provided by the Pi Foundation was for outputting VGA. If I were to make my own video converter using the Pico, that could be my display output. And then, all I would need to do would be to work out how to read in the video from the SE. Before investing a lot of effort, I did confirm that a display signal was being generated using an oscilloscope though. I think, in the end, the key to making everything work was understanding the interaction between the different clock frequencies. There's the system clock that the Pico runs at, and then there's the PIO clock which runs at a multiple of the system clock. Then there's the pixel clock, which is the frequency at which the video signal updates to light up a pixel or not. There's one pixel clock for the SE video, and another pixel clock for the VGA video out. Since the plan was to use the Pi Foundation's VGA code, both the PIO and system clock needed to run at an even multiple of the VGA pixel clock, but it also needed the PIO to run at an even multiple of the max pixel clock. Fortunately, while the pixel clock on the max side can't be changed, there's some flexibility in the VGA, PIO, and Pico clocks. This flexibility comes in the form of the VESA video standard resolutions, which most monitors support. These resolutions have a range of different pixel clocks, and particularly, most monitors support the XGA standard. XGA is better known as the 1024x768 video resolution, and most monitors support it at 60 and 75Hz vertical refresh rates, or pixel clocks of 65 and 78.8MHz. Because of how video signals are decoded by monitors, this means that everything in between should be supported as well. Running the numbers, I eventually worked out that I could run at a resolution of 1024 by 768 at 70.2 Hz with a pixel clock of 75.2 MHz. Conveniently, 1024 is double the 512 horizontal resolution of the SE. Because of this, I want to display each pixel twice, so I can actually use a pixel clock of 37.6 MHz. This divides evenly by 5 into a system clock of 188 MHz, which also divides evenly into the SE's pixel clock of 15.67 MHz 12 times. At this point, I could confirm that the odd refresh rate successfully worked on my bench LCD. Writing the code, there was a bit of trial and error involved. I went through several iterations where the signal wasn't quite being read correctly. Eventually, I nailed down a solution. In short, the PIO program sends the pixel data directly to a pixel buffer in main memory using a DMA channel transfer, which is reset by interrupt. Everything reading in the video runs essentially in the background. 
In more detail, the PIO clock for reading video ended up at half the system clock or six times the pixel clock at 94 MHz. This gives time for looping and also samples the video signal in the middle of each pixel, avoiding rising and falling edges. The initialization code configures the PIO with its program and a DMA channel for the PIO to write to. An interrupt is added to both the HSync and VSync pins. Any sync resets the clock divider to resynchronize with the Mac in case of clock drift. On VSync, video read is reset and the PIO's DMA write address is set back to the beginning of the pixel buffer. The PIO program is also sent the number of pixels per line and the number of lines to read. Programming the PIO is a little bit of a logic puzzle minigame, as everything needs to fit within 31 lines and it uses a type of assembly language. The PIO program starts by waiting for a vSync. It then waits for the 26 H syncs that make up the vBlank and have no pixel data. It does this by counting down using the X register. The number of lines to read and pixels per line sent by an interrupt code are stored in the X and OSR registers respectively. For each H sync, it waits through the horizontal port using repeated no operations, counting down using the Y register. Finally, it can read in the correct number of pixels, sending these to the DMA. It counts down using the Y register again, and afterwards goes back to waiting for H sync. To draw to the screen, the VGA program loop reads in line by line from the pixel buffer, turning bits into bytes in the process using a lookup table. I've made this code available on GitHub. At the heart here is the VGA demonstration board from Pimeroni. It connects this Pico via what's called a resistor DAC to the VGA port. There are a few pins left free, which I've soldered onto the video input for the SE. That video signal, however, is at 5 volts, while the Pico uses 3.3 volts, so a simple logic level converter was needed. 5 volt power and ground for the Pico is taken from the SE's power connector. Now that we've gone over how it works, let's test it out. I just need to plug in an ATX power supply, a monitor supporting 1024x768, and an appropriate ADB mouse and keyboard. Oh, and a SCSI device that there's something to boot from, which is taking the form of a raw SCSI. The power is wired so that turning on the power supply turns on the system. And there it is, VGA video output from the SE. Although the 70.2 Hz vertical refresh rate is not quite what you'd expect, it's worked on every monitor I've tested that supports XGA. This includes CRTs, LCDs, and even VGA to HDMI adapters. like for this direct capture. Thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with this little bit of my personal nostalgia from this very SE. Oh, I love crash.